Come on in, come on up, come on over for the merriest time of year. Come on up, come on in, get together for a good time. Smile, my dear. Good morning, happy day 10. I am happy today because I've already gotten lots of done this morning and I don't want to jinx it, but I feel like today is going to be a productive day, but we're not going to talk about it because we don't want to jinx anything. I've already had um, one thing that was on my schedule get canceled, so I have a little more time back in my day, so I'm like, all right, again, we don't want to talk about it too much or we will jinx it. <laughs> That's how I feel today. Okay, let's go ahead and open up today's advent calendars. I am going to show a winding tutorial right after this because I have been promising it and promising it and we've already gotten to the 10th day and I haven't shown it yet. So if you're curious how to hand wind your minis without any equipment, I'm going to show you that next. So here's day 10 of our Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations advent. This one is going to be a Dragon Horde yarn day. Ah, oh, that's a nice neutral. I like that a lot. So pretty. So we'll wind this up here in just a moment after we get everything open. I've got a little time to do that. Let's go ahead and do Vessel Stitch Co. I wonder, let's see, I've got today, Let's see, um, what is today? <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay, so I was kind of curious if I would be opening up the new box before we leave on our trip, and it looks like I will be. Let's see what day 10 has in store. There we go. I finished up the sleeve on my long summer cardigan this morning. And when I pack up for the trip, I'm going to pack in a lot of these Vessel Stitch Co. markers aww, to use for the second sleeve. Look how cute that little mitten is. Oh, I love that. So cute. Okay, let's do Moon Glow. Day 10 is called Willow. I would say that's a green if I have ever guessed one. Okay, day 10. Yes. So today I have a lesson this afternoon and then tonight we have another one of our um, Zoom groups. Tonight and tomorrow we have Zoom groups so I will have you know, a lot of knitting time then, which is great. So I need to make sure I have something ready to actually knit on then. Ooh. So that is Willow for day 10. There we go. Super nice. All right, last one here. This one's becoming a bit of a mess, this moon glow one, because I keep just like putting the colors back in. Okay, make sure I don't mess it up. Ah. Last one. I am going to just show the yarn today and not the color because that's what Kent told me to do because he's like, stop looking at the name of the color. <laughs> we can just show people later and he's right. So I'm gonna leave the tag in here and just show the color. And I think Ken can hear me right now, so I'm not gonna say what I think it is, but when it comes to guessing time, I already have some guesses, so I'm excited to do that. But let's go do a little winding first. If you have minis, get them ready. So I'm gonna give you a little tutorial on how I like to wind my minis. If I'm winding anything bigger than 20 grams, which is what this is, I'm gonna get out my Swift and my ball winder. I am not gonna do this by hand unless I am like stuck somewhere and that's the only yarn I have to knit with. So you can do this either on a Swift if you want to. A Swift is just the um, 
like mechanism that holds on to this loop of yarn while you wind it, but I don't. Um, if you find things get really tangled, then you might want to do that, but it's not necessary. <sighs> Toaster's licking his paws. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is when you have a hank of yarn like this, there's one end that is where it's doubled over. So it's like a smooth end. And then the other end is where it's looped together. So it looks like this, where you can kind of see like two loops crossed over each other. See, this one's just twisted and this one's two loops crossed over each other. So you want to find those two loops of yarn and kind of hold them together because there's tons of strands of it. Maybe if I get my face out of the picture here, that will help. Okay. It wants to focus, now it wants to focus on the little toaster. There we go. So I'm just gonna take this top loop off. See how it came into two parts here? And I'm holding that top loop separated. If you get it a little mixed up, we can fix it. And then just let things unwind until they're in a loop and pull it apart. Now, before you start winding, you're gonna to wanna to do a check. So most um, hanks of yarn will have three or so ties on it. Some have only one, some have more. A lot of times they're the same color yarn. Sometimes they're like um, cotton thread. I don't know, they can, they can vary. So what you wanna look for is the ties here. See how the ties like go through the yarn, but you can see the tie on top. And if I flip it over, same thing on this side. What I don't wanna see is any strands of yarn coming across like this. See how this is like now going across? I know it's really hard to see, but basically you wanna make sure that everything, you can kind of like tug on it, make sure that there's no strands going across it. Now this one is just a tie. It's not actually connected to the ball of yarn at all, so I'm gonna cut that one. Um, this one right here is also just a tie. I can tell because it's only two strands. And then, uh, oh, actually, you know what, I'm sorry. Backtrack. This one actually might be the one that actually has, like there will be two ends coming from the skein of yarn and that might actually be this one because this one wraps around. Sometimes it has like four strands in it, but then the last one here is another one that's just on there to keep things from getting tangled. It's not connected at all. So let me lay this on a flat surface, that's my preference, and I'm gonna cut first the two ties that are not connected to the ball and then I'm going to do this one that is part of the yarn that's actually going to be the strands that I'm going to wind up. You'll definitely want scissors for this part so I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut those two ties that were not part of the yarn at all like they're just a tie. Let me see if I can get closer in on this for you. Do, do, do. Yeah, let's get zoomed in. Okay, so this one right here, it's just a tie around the yarn. It's just there so that things don't get tangled. I'm just gonna trim it and then like pull it out and it will just completely come off. There's one more like that that I'm going to cut. And normally I wouldn't pick up and move my yarn. I would just leave my yarn, but because I wanna show you I'm moving the yarn. Okay, so there's the other one. And then this last one, it can look a little different um, depending on, like a lot of times it's not just two strands here, it's like four or so strands into there, but what you can just do is cut the knot off entirely. Try not to lose track of this because it's gonna be our ends from, from the skein from the hank, and I'm just gonna kind of pull on it until it's unwrapped here. All right, so you can see I've got 
two strands, and I can pick one of these to start winding my ball. I want to pick the one that's going to be the easiest to work with. So I might kind of pull on each one and see which one pulls up easier. These are both the same, so it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to choose one. The other thing you really want to look for is that you want your yarn to, to kind of all be like turned the same way. So if there's any twists in your skein, you might just kind of want to go around and kind of make it all lie the same way. And then since this strand is more coming from the bottom, I think I'm going to leave it alone and start to use this one that's more coming from the top. You can see it's kind of moving my yarn around as I go, and that's totally fine. Because we've chosen not to put this onto a swift or anything, we need to be really careful to go slow, and if it starts to close in, we need to separate it. So here's how you start actually winding a ball of yarn. And this is not any kind of special method, this is just what I do. So I like to take the end, and pinch it between my thumb and middle finger. And then with my index finger, I kind of create space and I start to wrap around. You don't want to do your fingers together like that or you won't be able to get this apart. So I just kind of wrap, I need a little more. Oops, see how that starts to happen? We need to fix that. Normally I'm not standing behind a camera when I do this. Okay, so we've wrapped a few times. Focus focus oh come on sorry y'all there we go all right so we've wrapped around a few times and then I'll just take this off kind of pinch it in the middle and start to wrap around this way. It really wants to focus on the yarn in the background, doesn't it? Wrap around this way, kind of around my thumb, kind of almost created like a bow here, and then I just smush it. I'm just trying to create like a bundle. And then I start to wrap around the bundle a few times and get a little more yarn. Wrap around the bundle, rotate the bundle. Wrap around the bundle, rotate. It's still kind of smushy, and not ball-like, but it will get there, I promise. So then you just start to wind and like rotate like, I don't know, not even 45%. Okay, see how it's starting to tangle here? This is where you really have to be careful. <clears throat> kind of stretch it back into place and then start getting more yarn. You should never have to like feed the ball of yarn through because it's all untangled. It's not tangled. Sometimes it just gets a little stuck in between the layers. So there we go. You kind of have to kind of have to help it a little bit along the way. Okay. Back to our ball. Okay, we're going to start getting it into an actual ball like state. So I'm just like wrapping, rotating like, do I don't even know how much, what angle that is. Not 90, wrap, rotate, wrap, rotate, wrap. And then eventually I will, instead of just like turning it around like this, I will flip it. I want it to focus more, sorry. I've just been turning it like this. I will turn it towards me and like smush it this way and start to wrap. So it's kind of like wrap, turn, wrap, turn, wrap, turn, and then like twist. I don't know, see how it kind of is starting to get into a ball? You just kind of wrap it, turn it. I don't really know, it just kind of starts it just kind of starts to happen. So typically I will be sat right here behind and I will just want, I will just kind of like pull up a little bit of yarn, wind it, pull up a little bit of yarn and wind it. And the whole time you just have to make sure that nothing crosses in the middle. When it does, you can just kind of take the sides and pull it taut again and then give it some space. 
and just kind of just go slow and work your way through it. If things are starting to um, get tangled in a spot, drop down your ball and you can kind of like work through to you get it figured out. So let's speed this up and start winding. And if we run into any trouble, I'll talk you through it. How things are starting to just stay attached here this is just because my yarn wants to stick together I can just pull it apart lay that because I watched it come up so I can just lay it back down where it's supposed to go and keep on going through definitely starting to get more ball like as I'm winding I'm just kind of rotating and then turning and then rotating and then turning to get it to be a ball it starts to get a little bit harder because there's not as much yarn to kind of weigh things down. So you might have to go a little slower, stop and kind of pull things back into their Hank-like state. You might have to stop winding and instead like slowly pull the yarn off by hand, kind of using the other hand to hold it down. And then once you have a little bit, do a little more winding, wind, 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 wind. And then again, kind of using your other hand to guide, pull the yarn off. And again, this is just because there's not as much left. So there's not as much to kind of weigh down the, um, the hank of yarn as much. You can kind of do this. Gets a little slower towards the end. And again, the yarn should not be tangled here. It just kind of gets stuck to itself. You should not have to stop and weave the ball of yarn through anywhere. If you do have to do that, you might end up getting yourself into more tangles because it really should not be tangled. So I'm just gonna finish up this last little bit here. Again, it's kind of slow. And then we will fin finally, finally be done. it's all done and again you don't have to do it that way if you do have a swift and you want to put the hank of yarn on the swift and then wind it by hand you can certainly do that it might save you a little bit of time I just don't enjoy getting my swift out every day because mine is not already set up like I have to set it up and so I just I don't want to do that every single day if it was a full skein it would be worth the time for sure um so if you do use a Swift, you can just use the tips for winding by hand. Oh, and I like to have these wound in a ball by hand instead of a cake because I have so much left over after I do the square. And when they're in a ball, after I'm done with my square, I can just cut my yarn and tuck the end back into one of the outside um, strands. And it's already like in a good state to store away until I want to use it again as a scrap. Whereas if I used a cake and I was pulling out of the middle, I would then have to hand wind it after I was done because it wouldn't stay nice and neat in a cake. So that's why I like to wind mine into a ball. All right, I'm going to go toss these uh, little ties in the trash and I need to get back to work. But I think when we have our lunch break here in a little bit, I will go ahead and make today's square. Toaster and I have been getting things done today. <laughs> um, I just did something 
they feel so good i have to share take a look at my email inbox right now check this out it's totally empty and so is this and so oh, those are ads and so is this oh, oh my gosh so here's what i did over the last month or two i've been getting a lot better about taking an email and either like I reply to it and then I delete it if I don't need to do anything else or I move it to like a category that I have on the side. So all my emails from the past month or so, I've been handling like this, but there's years of emails on here that I haven't been handling like that. And I just never feel like, um, you know, I want to like go through and like take the time and like every day I'll spend 10 minutes clearing out emails, but that's really difficult to do. So I saw this thing that somebody recommended and they said to create another category on the side and literally put all of your inbox into there. So your real inbox, your primary inbox is clear, but you don't lose all those emails just in case you need to search for something. It's in another category. Then if you want to go through and sort through those a little at a time, you can definitely do that. So now I just have to maintain this beautiful empty inbox which makes me feel so good and if i want to i can go back through and sort the rest of the stuff the stuff that's old if i don't want to it's still out of my way but i still have it so i just feel so good about that i'm so so happy with that and this is my nitty natty one not my personal one. Oh my gosh maybe one day i will get that one um down but i'm pretty good at deleting emails now if i open something i delete it most of the time all right, I think we've been working hard. It's time for a lunch break, and I'm hoping to crochet today's granny swear. Making our Christmas memories. I've been working so much lately. I can barely find the time to sleep. Yeah, I spend my time running around, keeping people pleased. But this is my favorite holiday. It's a chance to start over new. Cause I missed you so I'm letting go of everything but you. These are the good times with you. Baby, this year is just gonna be you and me. Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making our Christmas memories, oh And I've been longing to hold you close Forget about everyone else Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making our Christmas memories, oh Oh, la 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 oh oh La 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 oh oh La 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 Let's play the guessing game. I need to remind myself what it looks like. It's the... I know. I try not to look at it this time. Oh yeah. Okay, is it a show? Nope. Is it a ride? No. Oh. Is it a character? No. Is it an area of the park? It is. Is it Tomorrowland? Nope. Is it in Magic Kingdom? It is. Is it a big area like Tomorrowland? Yeah. Like one of the one of the big ones, the the burrows, if you will, the five burrows of Disney World. <laughs> no, it's a smaller area. Yeah, I mean somewhere in the middle of what you're saying. It's in Magic Kingdom. Is it in Fantasyland? No. No, it's like a separate area. Oh. We already had Main Street. What colors would you guess? Like brown, red, white. White. Blue. Okay. An area of the park, oh no. <sighs> An area of the park. It's in Magic Kingdom, mm -hmm. but it's not a big land. I mean, it's it's a decent sized area. Is it Liberty Square? It is. Yay! 
Liberty Square. I actually thought it was going to be frozen because it's blue and purple and black like this. I've been wrapping presents for you. I've been hanging marbles in the tree. And I've lit my house with Christmas lights. So you should come back home to me. And when we wake up in the morning, I'm going to play those carols that you love. Today has been a good day, as hoped, <laughs> and the rest of the day I'm going to be on Zoom with my membership and I'm going to be knitting. Um, Kent just made us some delicious soup. It's more like a stew. We have rice underneath and some bread. I think I'm first going to finish up the square from today. And I'm probably going to move my whole self once I'm done eating over to the bed here and chill. I'm already showered in pajamas. It's a, it's a chill vibe. And I'm going to work on my second sleeve because during my lesson today, I was able to pick up that second sleeve because I was teaching somebody to pick up a sleeve and knit a sleeve cap. And I'm like, well, this is perfect because... I actually need to do that on my sleeve. Um, but anyway, I need to run because it is 8 o'clock and time for us to start. Um, but I'll keep you posted with what knitting I'm able to get done tonight. These are the good times with you. Baby, this here is just gonna be you and me. Hang by the fire and chill. Isn't this how it is supposed to be? Making our Christmas memories. Oh. Yeah, see?